In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Here we go. Talking, trying to analyze and understand the first poem to be considered as a modernist poem. It is written by T.S. Eliot, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrug. Beside this poem, we are going, uh, or I am going, to uh, talk about Imagism as a literary movement and also as uh, an art movement. What is Imagism? Imagism يعني الحركة التصويرية uh, is a poetic movement that flourished in the USA, US and England between 1909 and 1917. The movement was led by the American poets Ezra Pound and later Amy Lowe. يعني هي حركة uh, أول ما ظهرت في أمريكا وبريطانيا بين 1909 و1917 كان القائد بها هو إزرا فاوند إزرا فاوند طبعا واحد من أهم الشعراء الحداثيين وساعد في قيادتها وفي تكوينها وتسديدها الشاعر أمي لوور Other images poets were the English writers D. H. Lawrence Richard Aldington and the American poets uh, John Gold, uh, Fletcher, and Helda Dolittle. These poets issued manifestos and wrote poems and essays embodying their theories. يعني هم كتبوا بيانات كتبوا مقالات شرحوا بها ماذا يريدون بهذه الحركة. They طبعا هي حركة فنية اعتيادي. They placed primary reliance on the use of precise, sharp images as a means of poetic expression. يعني الصورة هي تكون أداة للتعبير الشعر. الصورة الدقيقة الحادة هي وسيلة للتعبير الشعري. اعتيادي راح نقولون ست يعني شلون؟ آه هذا من خلال شرحنا للقصيدة مال جي ألفرد بروفوك راح نتكلم عن الإيمجز شلون هاي الصورة أنطت لنا المعنى الشعري and stressed precision in the choice of words not every word they use they, they do not use haphazard words الكلمات اللي يستخدموها آه تكون إلها تكون دقيقة جدا Freedom, هاي طبعا الخصائص مالتهم بالأسفل. Freedom in the choice of subject matter and form. يعني هم اختيارهم لي الموضوع يكون أح يكونون أحرار وفي الشكل أيضا أحرار. And the use of colloquial colloquial uh, colloquial language استخدام اللغة الدارجة ما يستخدمون لا يستعملون اللغة uh, الفورمال الرسمية. Most of the imagist poets Roach in a free verse يعني يستخدمون الشعر الحر شلون شعر المرحوم بدر شاكر السياب والمرحومة الملائكة Using such devices as assonance يستخدمون assonance الجناس والalteration rather than formal metrical schemes بدل ما يستخدمون الرايم سكيم يستخدمون ممكن يستخدمون الأسنانس ممكن يستخدمون الألتريشن أكثر من استخدامهم للمتريكال سكيمز to give structure to their poetry A notable collection of images poetry are uh, this images an anthology compiled by Pound and three anthologies compiled by Emily Wall all under the title images poets American Mariana Moore William Carlos William and Carl uh, Sandberg were among the many important writers to be in influenced by Imagism. Introduction to T.S. Eliot and the poem. You should have an idea before we start to talk about the poem. You should have an idea about the poet himself and um, a summary. 
a short summary about the poem. T.S. Eliot was born in 1888 and died in 1965. That means he lives for a long time. He is American-born writer, regarded as one of the greatest poets of the 20th century. His best-known poem, The Westland, 1922. يعني it is considered as a devastating analysis of the society of his time. He نقد أو تحليل مؤسف أو رهيب لوضع المجتمع في ذلك الوقت. Eliot also wrote drama and literary criticism. كذلك كتب مسرح ونقد أدبي. In his plays which used and rhyme verse, he attempted to revive poetic drama for the contemporary audience. His most influential criticism looked at the way the poet should approach the act of writing. Eliot won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1848. Uh, وربح النوبل برايز في الثمانية وأربعين. This is a short introduction to the poem, the love song of Elf, uh, of J. Alfred Prufrook, is uh, a masterpiece. It was published in Poetry Magazine in 1915, written as a dramatic monologue. الكتبت كمناجات درامية طبعا المناجات الدرامية راح ناخذها بالسلايد اللي بعده شرحها وخصائصها بشكل مختصر جدا The poem is an examination of the soul of a timid man يعني هي عن شنو تتكلم القصيدة هي يتفحص لروح شخص جبان at, uh, of a timid man paralyzed by indecision uh, and worry about his appearance to others. يعني كل مشكلته أنه هذا الشخص uh, يحس بأنه مشلول تماما غير قادر على اتخاذ قرار كل هم uh, قلقة بشأن مظهر أمام الآخرين particularly women anxious about Becoming bald, يعني كان قلق من إنه راح يتحول إلى الصلع. And about his thin arms and legs. Prufrook طبعا هو نتكلم عن الشخص اللي نتكلم عنه هو Prufrook. Hesitates in making even the smallest decisions or actions, wondering, يتساءل, Do I dare disturb the universe? هل أجر على إقلاق الكون? In a minute, there is time for decisions and revisions, which a minute will reverse. Eliot's first collection of poems, Prufrook and other poems, and other observation, appeared in 1917. The poem is often called the first modernist poem. It's a very important poem. It is considered as the first modernist poem, usually said. That the love song of Alfred Prufrook is not a song and it is not about love. Yes, before we proceed, you should know, dear students, uh, what is the dramatic monologue? Dramatic monologue يعني المناجات الدرامية. هذا التعريف راح يرافقكم كثيرا في الشعر الحديث. ما هو self conversation? Uh, speech or talks which includes interlocutor presented dramatically. It means a person who is speaking to himself or someone else speaks to reveal specific intentions of his actions. However, in literature, it is a poetic form uh, or a poem that presents the speech or conversation of a person in a dramatic manner. راح الرافق فروفروك خلال القصيدة مناجاته الداخلية تيار الوعي مالته الكلام مالته 
اللي راح تلاحظون انه فراجمنتد راح تلاحظون انه كلامه ما له علاقه باللي قبله او باللي بعده هي هاي صفه الفراجمنتيشن بالمود بوتري هذا الكلام مالته هو يشرح لنا الدواخل النفسيه مالته وطبعا راح يطلع على شكل صور features of a dramatic monologue a dramatic monologue has these common features in them number one a single person delivering a speech on one aspect of his life يعني هو شخص واحد يتكلم لنا عن جانب من حياته the audience may or may not be present قد يكون هنالك audience يسمعون إلى أو قد لا يجدون ماكو يعني audience مستمعين speaker reveals his temperament and character only through his speech من خلال ال speech مالته راح نعرف حالته النفسية راح نعرف شخصيته وراح نعرف مزاجه Elliot starts his poem with an epigraph which is taken from Dante's Divine Comedy it reads If I thought my answer way to one who could ever turn to the world, this flame would move no more. But since no one has ever retained alive from this death, if what I hear it be true, without fear of infamy, I answer you. The words are spoken by a lost soul. Someone is damned, who is damned to hell. He is now in the hell. He is talking to someone about the crime he has committed that leads him to be convicted and be in the hell. This correlates with the prophet needs to know the answer to the question he wants to ask as a condition of asking it, or perhaps in order for prophet to be able to ask the question he would have to know, to care what the answer would be, In that case, the answer wouldn't matter. You know, if anyone did something wrong in this world, it would be too difficult for him to admit it, to talk about it publicly. So, this character, one of Dante's character in the hell, saying that since I'm going to tell you something, Other people would never be able to hear about it. Then I'll take it because uh, I would not be ashamed if I tell you about it. Um, how can we relate this to the character of Prufruk? Prufruk is talking actually to himself. He is, he is narrating something fragmented, talking to himself about his desires, his needs, uh, and important things he needs to do about his real inner injured psyche. So there is no problem if he tell the world about it because no one would learn about that. He is actually talking. To himself, this is a dramatic monologue. So, مثل ما شخصية الجحيم شخصية الرجل في الجحيم تقول بما أنني بما أن لا إنسان في الأرض ممكن له أن يسمع ما سأقوله وبذلك فأنا لن يصيبني العار إذا سأتكلم مثل ما أحب. كذلك شخصية بروفروك. أو وضعية بروفروك في القصيدة هو يتكلم let me let us go me and you to whom he's talking actually to himself not a real person so هو مؤمن أن ما سيقوله لن يسمعه أحد فهو لن يصاب بالخجل إذا مثلما أن شخصية هذا الرجل في الجحيم تتعذب كذلك شخصية بروفروك على الأرض وهي تلوي لنا قصتها في هذه القصيدة أيضا تتعذب وهي في مأمن أن لا أحد سيسمع 
شيء عن عذاباتها ودواخلها Line 7 to 9 <clears throat> Let us go then, you and you and I When the evening is spread out against the sky Like a patient to the rise upon a table So, uh, the character of Profuk, the speaker in this poem Invite someone to go with him How to go? He said, when the evening is spread out against the sky So let us go at night. Let us have a walk. Actually, he is talking to himself. Here we have a dramatic monologue. The character is talking to himself. Prufruk, the persona of the poem, issues his invitation to an unspecified you. We don't know who is you to go with him to, uh, to an as yet unspecified place. He doesn't specify the, spe uh, the one who is talking to him, nor does he specify the place they are going to him. To establish when they will be going, he introduces this concerning simile, like a patient etherized upon the table. This peculiar use of simile reflects immediately back on the persona, for the sky itself would probably never be like this. However, Perfruk, looking up at the sky, might indeed perceive it pressing back down upon him in such a way that he would feel like he was spread out upon a table. The word etherized indicates a sense of helplessness. يعني المتكلم هنا أنا برفوق دعونا نذهب دعنا نذهب أنا وأنت كمريض عندما يمتد المساء إلى السماء كمريض مخدر على طاولة كمريض مخدر على طاولة من المخدر؟ لا يعقل أن يكون السماء لا يعقل أنه الكلام هنا يرجع إلى السماء الكلام هنا يقصد به الشخص الذي يتكلم معه أو هو وهذا الشخص الذي يتكلم معه أي هو ونفسه Like a patient etherized upon a table. طبعاً هنا ن ال ال we have a paradox. يعني كيف ممكن لشخص etherized or upon a upon a table be able to walk in the street of uh, in the street of uh, the city? This paradox. And or this image, the suggested image, suggests the paralysis this uh, character feels. He feels a paralysis. It reflects his psychological condition and helplessness. Let us go through certain half deserted streets, the muttering retreats. Of restless night in one night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurant with oyster shells. Now this is Profruk asking uh, the other one who is talking to him. Uh, the road he, the road he and the you will be taking is it through a thwardy part of the city, where cheap hotels. Predominate along with lower class dining establishments. Muttering retreats suggest places where people go to be alone in low voices so their private conversation will not be heard. The phrase one night refers to hotels where lovers meet in secret, and the reference to oyster shell carries with, the, with it the connotation of sexuality. Here, the poet asks his Uh, ask his friend or asking himself we are not certain let us go let us go so he's talking to someone maybe he's talking to himself to go to go to cheap places cheap hotels uh, where people uh, talking in low voices what is the significance we shall know in the next few lines yes 
Let us go then, you and you, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one night, cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells. Streets, streets that follow like a tedious argument. Nana يشبه الشوارع. وكأنها like a tedious argument نقاش ضجر of insidious intent to head to lead you to an overwhelming question oh do not ask what it is let us go and make our visit طبعا تشعرون هنا أنه فروفروك مقرر أن يسوي في شيء حسب ما يقوله حسب ما يصفه انه insidious intent ذا مقصد خبيث to lead you to an overwhelming question راح يدعوك هذا الشيء الى سؤال كبير سؤال يغمرك oh do not ask لا تسأل what it is let us go and make our visit هنا تشعر انه فعلا مقرر ان يعمل شيء ما Ego streets are further described by a simile that indicates that even once you pass through them, the things you have seen there continue to affect you. Specifically, the idea of people engaged in the romantic or sexual encounters in the hotels and restaurants. This then affects Frufruk's thoughts about where he is going, causing him to consider What he characterizes as an overwhelming question, the use of the ellipses, ellipses يعني الحذف, indicates that the you who accompanies Prophet has asked what the question would be. وكأنما هنالك شخص مع سأل السؤال ما هذا ماذا تريد أن تسأل سأل السؤال وهو لي جاوب. The rhymed couples of I and the sky streets. And retreats, hotels, oyster shells, argument, and intent, and what is it? Or visit, along with repetition of the word streets, create an emotional music, in keeping with the idea of song, and thus serve to carry the reader into Profuk, Profuk's emotional state. So, هنا القصيدة غير مقفاة، لكن الشاعر يستخدم بها. Alteration or essence, the sejj or the genus of estihlal, gives us music that puts us in a state of harmony with Profuk. In the preceding lines, he said, "To lead you to an overwhelming question, oh, do not ask what is it. Let us go and make our visit." And immediately he starts to talk. In the room, the women come and go, choking off my unc, my of Michelangelo. So the reference to the visit presented in the preceding stanza causes Prufrook to look forward in his mind's eye to the room he is walking toward. مباشرة هو أدخلنا إلى الغرفة التي يريد أن يكون فيها, where he imagines حيث تخيل امرأة تتكلم. تحمل كوب من الشاي أو أو كأس ما وتتكلم في شأن عالي الثقافة artistic subject quite at odds مختلف تماما عن الأفكار اللي هو كان يفكر فيها طبعا of talk in the room the women come and go talking of Michael Angelo Michael Angelo نحات إيطالي في عصر النهضة The yellow fog that drops its back upon the window pass The yellow smoke that drops its muzzle on the window pass licked its tongue into the corners of the evening lingered upon the pools that stand in drains let fall upon its back The suit that falls from the chimneys. 
The new repetition in lines 22 and 20, 21 and 22 signals that Pufuk's attention has returned from the imagined room to his actual surroundings. يعني الشاعر هنا أو عفوا مش شاعر بروفوك نقدر نفهم أنه انتباهه تحول من الغرفة التي تتكلم فيها تلك السيدة ذاهبة وآتية تتكلم عن الشاعر الإيطالي مايكل أنجلو تحول اهتمامه إلى مشهد آخر It is evening المشهد الآن مساء uh, foggy and his attention focuses on the fog mixed with chimney smoke and then takes off in a metaphorical process that equates the movement of the fog with the movement of some seemingly cat-like creature around the structure of the city at evening. Profuk's lyrical musing here reflects the dreamlike emotional state evoked by the fog يعني هنا الشعر يقول بالضبط the yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes الضباب الأصفر الذي يحك مؤخرته على حافة الشباك إذا هنا يشبه الفوق بماذا؟ بقطة بالقطة عادة القطة تحك جسمها بحواف الأشياء والتشبيه هنا ليس باستخدام like it is not a simile it is a metaphor إذا هنا المت الفوق تحول إلى شنو إلى حيوان يتجول بين أبنية المدينة وأي فوق the yellow yellow فوق ثم قال مرة ثانية the yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window pants, licks its tongue into the corners of the evening. Licked its tongue. لعقت لسانها into the corners of the evening. إلى داخل حواف المساء. إذا المساء له حواف وهذا الفوق وهذا الدخان أو الضباب الأصفر قطة تلعق حوافه lingered upon the pools that stand the drains ثم تنحني إلى البقع مالت البقع المياه أو برك المياه المتجمعة عند فوهات التصريف let fall upon its back the suit that falls from the chimneys وماذا يسقط عليها؟ The suit that falls from the chimneys السخام المتساقط من المداخن صورة غريبة The lines in this stanza are very close to length لو تنتبهون على lines متقاربة في الطول So that along with the rhyme pattern of A, A, B, B, F1, A, A, B, A, C, D, E, D, A, and the alteration of licked, lingered, and leave, a kind of trace-like state is established. لاحظ هنا أنه trance-like state is established. هنا نبدأ أفكار تتجمع. أفكار أفكار هنا أشبه ما تكون بحالة من الانتشاء Translike state is established أشبه ما تكون بحالة من الانتشاء وهو يتحدث عن شكل الدخان أو شكل الضباب الأصفر المتشكل Slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing that it was a soft October night, curled once upon the house and fell asleep. Of course, he is talking again about, continue talking about what? About fog. And he slipped, 
by the slipped by the trace يعني ال كأنما هذا ال الفوق ينزلق من قرب البلكونة made a sudden leap ويقفز فجأة طبعا هنا عندنا متافور يعني الفوق الأصفر الضباب الأصفر يشبه بقطة قطة تقفز وتلعق وتحك وتقفز فجأة and seeing that it was a soft October وفجأة تدرك أنه هذا الأكتوبر الرقيق أكتوبر نايت curled once upon the house and fell asleep curled once upon the house and fell يشبه حركة ال يشبه الضباب الأصفر بقطة تتحرك حركة حول المنزل curled once upon or about the house وكأنها كرة لولبية تتلولب حول البيت ثم تنام and indeed there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the streets rubbing its back upon the window panes there will be time there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet there will be time to murder and to create and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and to drop a question on your plate time for you and time for me Proof Rook's reverie on the smoke or fog reminds him that dreams or imagined activity has no correlation to actions or events in real life. يعني ما يتخيله لا علاقة له بالحياة. So he determines that just as there is time for the fog and the smoke, there is time to get himself adjusted to what he is about to do. كما أن لل للدخاني ولل وللضباب وقت يفعل ما يشاء وكأنه قطة تحوم ليلا كذلك هو يستطيع أن يفعل ما يشاء في الحياة الحقيقية هنالك وقت there is time to get himself adjusted to what he is about to do however at the full repetition في تكراره لكلمة there will be time he is once more focusing on where he is going And what he is about to do there. رجع مرة ثانية يركز في ما يفعله وما يريد أن يفعله. And he is overwhelmed once again. ومرة ثانية هو غمرة بحالة من النشوة مرة ثانية. Elliot exaggerates Profuk's emotional state. طبعاً هنا عندنا مبالغة ب Uh, paralleling it to those associated with acts of murder and creation. At this point, the phrase "there will be time" transmutes into repetitions of words "time like a clock ticking the seconds of the present" into Prophrock's past. 